Hey, hey, this is Debbie Hodge from stitchstories.com here today to talk to you about our design Snowy Pines. I live in New Hampshire. It's cold, it's icy, it's snowy. This is the perfect design for this season. And while I always give you complete instructions on how to stitch something in our kits, I wanted to just talk a little bit about this, give you more details because this is the first kit I've ever given you that has figures and their limbs and the sense of motion that you want to evoke. But again, with every kit, you'll get a tin that'll have all the things you need. You'll have the hoop, you'll have a tin that'll have your pattern printed to 10 and a half inch uh, fabric. This is permanently printed, it does not wash out so you have the pattern you have the hoop so you can hoop up your project you have full skeins of dmc floss you have two needles and then a needle minder so <clears throat> here's uh here's another winter design this is winter cabin with a needle minder you set the enamel piece on top of your fabric you put the magnet behind your fabric so see how it holds that on there and then the great thing is your needle will sit on that teapot or teacup or moth or bird. We have several designs and it'll just hold it in place. So with the kit you do get a little teacup enamel needle minder as well as the floss and the storage tip. So let's talk about snowy pines. I mentioned that the directions have everything you need but I just want to talk about it a little more. So I give you a great photo with detailed stitching so you can get a sense of how I stitched it. You get the color guide, you get the, di um, the diagram that tells you the stitch and the color to use. I'll give you a whole bunch of extra tips. So that's all in here, but let's talk about the design. Snowy Pines, there's so much fun stitching in here. So I usually like to start with something easy when I get going, just to sort of get my sea legs and get used to stitching things. And the back stitch is really an easy stitch to get started with, and I'd probably start by stitching those diagonals inside the word snowy. So I'd stitch those with back stitch, and then stitch the word snowy with back stitch in a, in a navy to outline it. So if you notice the back stitch gives you a fine line, a thinner line, it's got that um, the, the breaks of the back stitch, so a little bit of texture. That's as opposed to an outline stitch that's thicker. If you take a look at the bars of the chairlift, those are done with the outline or stem stitch, and you can see that those are thicker. The shoelaces over here on the skates, they're done with chain stitch, and that's gonna give you even a thicker kind of outline. So think about that as you do things, that each, the kind of outline you use gives you a different feeling. The banner's done with the outline, which is thicker. The skates, I used split for the, the, the metal blades because there's a lot of curves there. And split gives you a thicker line, but it helps you get around those little curves and get a little more detail. But then if you look a little bit higher to the brown of the, the soles on the skate, those are done in backstitch. And then also the, the outer parts of the skate are also done with split. So you get a different effect depending on the kind of outline stitch you use. So you can get started doing some of these outlining kinds of stitches before you move into the fun details. So what are the fun details? Well, one of them are these pine trees. Those are done with Lazy Daisy. And as you can see, you've got smaller Lazy Daisies working the way all the way down. One thing I do to keep this nice and tidy is I try to go in the same, like opposite branches, opposite lazy daisies that create branches, I tried to go into that same hole in the center to keep things precise. You don't have to do that. That's just what I like to do. You'll notice that these are topped with a little bit of snow, some French knots to give that sense of snow. Another way that we give the sense of snow or ice are in these backstitched grids all around that would represent sort of ice or snow on the ground and give you a sense of that for it. So let's talk about stitching um, Let's see, let's talk about some of the special things. One thing is the grid on the back of the chairlift, those are done with fly stitches. The fly stitch, it, if, you, if, you, if you do it loose and use a short anchor stitch, you get sort of a U or a scallop, but if you pull it tight, you get Vs. So these are rows of fly stitch back there. You could use straight stitch if you want, but I like to use the fly stitch. Uh, another place that I use the fly stitch are for the eyelets on the shoelace. So in that situation, it's more of a rounded kind of effect for that. And always think about the order in which you do things. Um, so those eyelets on the shoelace are done in the, the gray or the, um, you know, the sort of tin. And then the shoelaces are done in more of a tan. Stitch the shoelaces after you do the eyelets because that would be more naturally how it flows. Let's see, um, the border, again, this is simple. This is with back stitches and then very small little satin stitch circles. Like there's just three stitch for each of those circles. 
Now let's talk about those bodies and getting the sense of motion and those characters, those, those bodies skating on the ice. So if you take a look, let's take a look up here. I don't know if you can see from the camera, I did his shirt with chain stitch. I filled it with chain stitch and they're going up and down in the middle of his body, but then for the arms, they go out that way. So we get a sense of the limbs. And then for his legs, I used split stitch with three strands of floss instead of two to make it a little thicker. And you can see that they're sort of running down and curving with the shape of the leg. With um, this guy over here with his jacket, so here's where we're using satin stitch, but instead of filling the whole shape, the whole shape with satin stitch, you'll um, see on the pattern, let me show you the pattern. There are some guidelines on the pattern. So if you take a look at that, the man with the, the gold sweater, there is a line through the middle. So when I stitch that, I've got diagonal satin stitches, but they are in sections. There's one section for his arm, there's one section for the right side of the jacket, there's one section for the left side of the jacket. And it just breaks the whole body up a little bit and gives us this sense that there's more there. Even though it's all in one color and all in the same stitch, we break it up to get some, some shadow lines, some defining lines. We've got the mom with the child over here and the child's jacket has satin stitching going up and down for the body of the jacket, but then the hood goes horizontally so we get some demarcation and the arm goes in another direction and then if you take a look at the mom's body we've got um, the the navy pants I did that same thing thick thread um, three strands of navy floss using the split stitch and just sort of filling in with the lines of her legs and then her tan top is in I used to chain stitch for that going vertically and then again satin stitch for the coat but breaking it up into sections and the lines are on the pattern for you so you'll see that you could fill one section for the arm one above the arm one below the arm and then one on the other side so that's how you fill in those bodies there this is snowy pines it's a great design to, to display in this this cold weather season and it's really fun to stitch because you start to get a sense of how to stitch bodies in movement. So you can find that at the stitchstories.com shop.